Hello everybody, this is Bad Weather Freak here with another video and um, I'm trying to actually improve my uh, my skills as far as uh, being able to provide better content for you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, um, better videos. I know in the past I have been making a lot of videos about me driving in the car, talking about the storms and talking about the forecast uh, and all that stuff. Um, or sitting in the back uh, patio on my back porch, uh, recording out towards my backyard. So I wanted to make make it a little more interesting, give you guys a little more information. And um, what I want to do today is um, this is my first time using a video or using this software or any software to make a video about forecasting and predictions and all that stuff. Um, but I feel like it's, it's time to make a little bit of a change, provide a little bit better content for you guys, and little by little keep improving. So if I make a mistake or uh, it doesn't come out too good, I apologize. Be Definitely be aware of that, but I'm doing my best as, as we speak. Um, so first of all, what I wanted to do is this is something that is definitely closer to home and, and uh, a little more re uh, recent. But what I wanted to point out first of all in this video is the severe weather outbreak that we are going to have starting tonight into tomorrow. Um, it, it is it is going to be is is shaping to be very bad. Um, a tornado outbreak. I have a feeling this could be uh, one for the wreckers. Um, it, it could possibly be called down the road, uh, from, you know, or years to come. Most likely the Easter. Uh, tornado outbreak. Now keep in mind we haven't had a really uh, bad tornado season and what I mean by that is yes we have had other seasons for the past few years where we get a lot of uh, a lot of tornadoes but not um, really strong tornadoes like EF4s, EF5s for example. It has been years since I think we haven't seen a EF5 tornado um, and also a lot of them making landfall um, or touching down, I should say. Um, that's what I have seen that it hasn't happened in the past few years. Unfortunately, it's a matter of time before it happens. And that's actually what it seems like it might happen uh, tonight into tomorrow. Um, here in the weather.com or weather channel website, as you can see here, let's click on, on this uh, article that I wanted to share with you. <clears throat> One of the reasons why we get tornadoes or a tornado outbreak is a few ingredients but uh, the main ingredients is this right here right now as you guys see and I'm gonna show you guys um, further out in the video the Gulf of Mexico right now is very warm and that's fuel for not just hurricanes but also tornadoes so you're gonna see that uh, this moisture how, it, how you see in the picture it gets pulled up so you get warm moisture pulled up you have a jet stream, which is a strong current of, uh, of wind. And then you also have a low a system of low pressure that is coming from up here. Um, so when you get this all these ingredients taking place in, 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 in one spot, that's when that's what triggers tornadoes uh, or a tornado outbreak. So you have a jet stream, which is a, a current of wind. You have a, a system of low pressure and then you get moisture, warm moisture from the Gulf. And that's a recipe for a tornado outbreak, and that's what we're that's what we're gonna see tonight and um, and tomorrow, uh, which is tomorrow seems to be the worst day. Um, now, a few points that I wanted to show here with you is that it is likely that this weekend we're definitely gonna have a tornado outbreak. It's gonna cover a wild, uh, wide or a, a big area. It's any it's gonna be anywhere from Texas to the southeast. You're gonna see. Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama, and some parts of uh, northern Florida also, uh, and eventually the Carolinas into Monday, that are going to be affected by this outbreak. Um, for example, one thing that really catches my attention is this right here. A uh, number of tornadoes may be strong and have long tracks. And that's a big problem. This is a, this is a big problem. Because um, in a lot of seasons you do get some some tornadoes that do form but they're first of all in the middle of nowhere uh, so it doesn't really affect anybody or they do 
touchdown, but they don't stay they don't stay um, um, form for a long time. Anyways, they as, as soon as they come down, they might be on, on the floor for a few minutes and then they just disappear again. But this is not good because it's saying that it have long tracks and that's that's not going to be good. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is April is pretty much the peak of tornado uh, season, so that's something that uh, is going to happen. Now, as far as Saturday goes, this is a map of where the, the, the areas are going to be impacted. You have the majority of Texas uh, in the pretty much in the, in the epic center. Then you have different shades of red. So here is possible. The darker red is likely, um, you know, likely here, possible. And then you have an area here which is possible too that could, that could happen. Um, this is in Saturday into Saturday night. Now, Easter Sunday, how it said here, that is basically what the worst is going to be. And um, and this is really cool because it gives you more detail. Texas is going to be Saturday to mid-morning Sunday. Louisiana, mid-morning Sunday to late afternoon Sunday. Mississippi, Sunday evening to Monday morning. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Late morning Sunday to mid-evening Sunday. Tennessee, Sunday evening to Monday morning. Alabama, mid-afternoon Sunday to very early Monday, and then Georgia, late evening Sunday to late Monday morning. This is when the biggest chances of seeing tornadoes is going to be uh, very likely of this tornado outbreak. You have Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, Alabama, um, uh, Louisiana, a little bit of Arkansas. That's going to be the worst. And again, all this area. So big area. Northern Florida, Georgia, South North Carolina, Virginia, all this area could be affected by tornadoes also. Some of the other impacts could be flash flooding, uh, flash flooding, and this pretty much a humongous amount of uh, area that is going to be prompt to flash fl uh, flooding. Excessive rainfall outlook for Sunday. Um, so if you guys live in this area, <clears throat> please be aware of this is happening. Um, listen to the local forecast and local news stations. Um, now, this is also very interesting or uh, very important. Um, severe weather shelter. Um, with the coronavirus going on, it's going to be very difficult uh, because you already have people. You, you have to, laws that are saying you need to be respecting social distancing. That's going to be very difficult because... We talking about you have if you don't have a choice you have to go to a shelter, and most likely it's gonna be packed. So how are you gonna keep social distancing? Is gonna be very difficult. Um, wear gloves, masks, all that stuff, and listen to the local officials. Uh, that's that's the best you can do basically. Um, but I don't want to touch too much uh, uh, as far as the tornado uh, outbreak. I'm uh, giving you enough information. Do a little bit more, further research and please be aware of this. Um, now, what the bulk of the video, what I wanted to show you guys is we, you keep hearing that 2020 hurricane season is going to be bad. And uh, uh, I wanted to sh take a moment and show you some examples of why a lot of people are thinking that. So right now, what I would like to show you is this. There's a lot of ingredients. OK, you have the Bermuda high. That's actually something that is going to make a big difference as far as the how, where this, the the, the uh, hurricanes and the storms are going to be. If you have, for example, here, you have um, usually the Bermuda High. If the Bermuda High this year is weak, most likely we're going to have a lot of storm form, but just like 2010, just about none of them will probably make landfall. They, 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 the normal thing for hurricanes is in this area of the globe that we live, they, they, they move towards the west and to curve up to the North Pole. That's a normal thing for a storm to do. When you're in this part of the world, the storms usually move east and south. So get, again, towards the South Pole. That's just the way they, they move in the earth. Um, sorry about that. I have uh, my dogs here. Um, hey. But basically, that's, that's what happens. So you have south uh southeast that's where the storm more move here here they move um uh, east uh west i'm sorry west and then towards the north so if, if the bermuda high is weak you're you're basically going to have the hurricanes like 2010 where they move a lot of them move up 
and I wanted to show you something here. You see, um, basically what I wanted to do is I want to show you the differences why people think that this this year, this season, is going to be a bad season. So this is uh, April 9th, 2020. This is the latest sea surface temperature map. You can see how uh, off the coast of Africa you have... Okay, so first of all, let me, let me point something out. So you see this here, these colors. What these colors mean? What they mean is zero is average temperatures. The blue, it doesn't really mean that the temperatures are freezing. It means below average. So if average temperature, let's say here for this time of the year is, let's say, 70 degree water temperatures, well, what it means when it's in blue is that they are under that average. Same thing goes this way. If they the brighter the color, the higher above average that they are. It doesn't mean that they are 100 degrees in the water temperature. So without that being said, you can see that the Gulf of Africa, this is where the uh, storms starting to develop. It is everything, just about everything in the Atlantic is, is above average, with the with exception of a, cold pa a few cold, cooler patches here. But when you look at the Gulf, it's starting to get bright. I mean, you already have, I would say, two and a half, maybe three uh, degrees Celsius higher than, uh, than normal. Same thing on this area. And in this area, even, even stronger than that. You see some reds showing up here. That's not good news. Okay, and I wanted to show you <clears throat> comparison with other uh, notable forecast or no notable seasons that we had in the past, so you can see the difference. Why a lot of people are thinking this is going to be a bad hurricane season. So first of all, this is 2020. Uh, we all remember what happened in 2017. Let me show you something here. 2017. 2017. This was not as bright. Same thing in the Gulf. And you have a little bit more blue showing up here and here. We all remember what happened in 2017. In 2017, we had, I believe it was four category four hurricanes make landfall. Um, that's the most not a, re, the, the season that we remember the most. So again, let me show you the difference. You got 2017 this time around of the year. Now we have 2020. You can see the Gulf is warmer, less blue showing up. And this is warmer here. Again, one more time. You can see the difference. Now, another comparison here. Uh, 2010. 2010 was known for having a ton of activity, but everything pretty much is curved out to sea, even though we had a lot of hurricanes. So 2020 and now versus 2010. Look how much blue you had in 2020, not just in the Pacific, but also in the Atlantic, Northern Atlantic, and even the Gulf. And this is probably part of the reason why we had a lot of storms where they were developing. Look how warm this was. They were developing, but they were just curving out to sea. And this is why. This year is very different. Barely any blue, much warmer Gulf. So that's not a good idea. That's actually not good. Now, let me show you another season, 2008. Look how much blue there was in 2008. 2008 was another season where there was a lot of activity. Now, this time of the year, yeah, a little warmer than usual. A little speck here, Gulf. The Gulf is always going to be very warm. The Gulf is always going to be very warm. No matter what uh, you're going to have, if it, whether it's La Nina, El Nino, a neutral year, the Gulf pretty much all that, all, every year is going to be able to sustain hurricane activity. But comparing, comparing, remember, 2008, we had a lot of activity. Now, this is just for April. This, this did change as we went ahead into the peak of the hurricane season. But what I want to focus is early forecasting. Why are all these forecasts are showing up as above average? And why there's a possibility that this is going to be a very bad hurricane season? So again, 2008, we had a lot of activity versus 2020. Look at the difference. Huge difference. That's why, again, the forecasts are being higher than usual. Now, let's show, let's show you another season that we all remember, 2005. 2005 was the busiest season in hurricane, at least in recorded hurricane history in the Atlantic. And 
we went to so many storms that we ran out of names and they started using Greek names. That's how bad and how many season or how many um, storms we had during that season. But again, let's show you the differences. Golf still has some blue going on, blue here, and then of course this the main developing region or the MDR was fairly warm. So again, now bigger, darker colors here. 2005, not quite as dark. And we had a record-breaking 2005 hurricane season. Again, another reason why we think this year might be a bad year. Let's show you another memorable season. 2004. That's the year that we had, uh, well, I, I want to say, four hurricanes, I think, that made landfall in Florida. <clears throat> we had three literally back-to-back -back within two weeks apart. And we had Charlie, we had Jeannie, and there was another one. Um... I can't remember the name of that third hurricane, but you had three hurricanes within six weeks uh, make landfall in Florida. So you had Charlie that came through here, through the southwest, and then you had two hurricanes that came through the uh, uh, southeast area near um, four, uh, four, four piers. Yeah, four piers. But again, look how the map looks. Blue showing up here. Warmer as usual. Not as warm as 2020. Look at the difference. Big difference. 2004 again let's show you another season that was very memorable and uh, that was the last season that I have for you that will be 1998 1998 was I was I personally lived in Puerto Rico in 1998 we went through uh, hurricane we went through hurricane George's yeah hurricane George's in the area where I was it was um, it was in in uh, in the mountains in Puerto Rico, that's where I used to live. So we definitely went through the eye wall and everything. And, and that was very, very frightening, let me tell you. So we had a bad season this year. We had also Hurricane Mitch, which has been the deadliest storm in the Atlantic and the Caribbean basin. Um, I think it was in Honduras who got very affected. It killed almost 20,000 people. So here we had, of course, the Pacific was very, very warm. But here... Not as warm still as this year. Look at the difference. This year, much warmer also. So this is just a few things that I wanted to show you guys as far as the sea surface temperature maps. Again, this is just a few uh, or one of the main ingredients for having a bad hurricane season or a busy hurricane season, but it does, it's not everything. There's older... Uh, mechanism all the ingredients that are going to determine if we're going to have a very uh, very hurricane season a very busy hurricane season but so far this is what I wanted to show you um, thank you guys for your time I will keep you posted with more videos hopefully videos like this one uh, and better but so far this is all I have for you guys I wanted to show you this and share it please stay safe if you live on those uh, area, uh, states where are going to be affected by the tornado outbreak and uh, have a good day, guys.